Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Greetings. Welcome to Swayam Prabha DTH 16 channel. My name is Ariba Shabbir and we have been discussing English language teaching. Today we are going to cover up the three new approaches and these are personal response, moral philosophical and stylistic approach. So before we go ahead, let us recapitulate of what we did in the last session. In the last session, we discussed literature can make teaching interesting, we should incorporate literature while teaching language. Beside, we learned that it helps us to talk about grammar and sentences with our students in an interactive way. By understanding literature, our students will be able to grasp the grammatical accuracy as well as appropriacy. In addition, we also learned that we can talk about interesting topics and we can also encourage our students to express their point of view and introduce topics in more depth ways like translations. So, there are number of platforms that are available and also there are number of topics that can be discussed like uh, there are many topics with regard to social issues. So, these can be brought in literature class and we can help students to build their constructive views and express them with better uh, ways. The other thing that we learned in the last session was language based paraphrastic approach and information based approach play an important role. They are the effective ways of teaching literature. So, they have their special benefits and if they are applied successfully, they would give immense results with regard to teaching language through literature. Now, you know that now we are going to learn moral uh, philosophical approach, personal response approach and we will also go through the stylistic approach of teaching literature. So, you will not only be able to develop their understanding, but you will also be able to apply the general understanding of the three approaches uh, to literature teaching pedagogy. Now, moving on to the next slide. So, personal response approach enables students to develop their language. It helps them to understand characters and emotions. And not only this, it encourages students to love and enjoy reading since they are affiliating their personal lives with the theme and they are finding themselves dwelled into the concept. So, they feel themselves related to the concept and also to the text and therefore, it encourages learning because they find themselves in a position of learning language through emotions and characteristics and that is how ultimately it is leading to the fact that personal response approach is creating an inf influential impact upon the students learning. Now, coming on to the slide, let us see that how it promotes the students to associate the subject matters. of the reading text with their personal lives or personal experiences. Now, it engages individual in literary text reading as personal fulfillment. We see that many students uh, learn and read text just to get the joy and pleasure. They read it in their uh, past time and they make it as a hobby as well. So, if we see learners adopting personal uh, response approach, we will also find that they have developed a certain level of competency in their language because it has somehow uh, connected them uh, through their memories and uh, uh, 
uh, since they have taken it as their personal experience, they would find themselves related to it and they will express themselves in a more clear way. Now, coming on to the next point, let us say that it engages individual in literary text and also it uh, helps them to uh, do uh, re reading with literary competency. So, when it comes to competency, there are two important concepts here to mention. First is literary and then the other thing is language. But here we are focusing on literary competency because uh, we would go for grammatical structures, we would go for the character development, the emotional uh, approach of uh, the, the emotional uh, component that is included in the text. So, they will be able to express their thoughts in a more philosophical or you can say in a more personal way of uh, uh, saying it. But when we say language, we mainly refer to listening, speaking, reading and writing. And uh, through personal approach, they will be able to bridge the gap between the two important components that is language and literature. So, this personal approach is going to provide them that bridge which enables them to do that personal fulfillment. Now, coming on to the next slide, let us try to understand that how can we implement this approach into our classrooms. So, as you see in the slide, there are three steps that are involved and you can go step by step. At the same time, uh, you can consider the fact that these steps can be tailored according to the needs of the learners. So, at first you should do brainstorming. So, while brainstorming you can introduce the story and you can discuss the theme of it. And uh, you know when you discuss the theme and the story students generally get the idea what this story is it about, what they are going to learn, is it a humor or is it a romance or is it a fiction, non-fiction, whatever it is. So, you know while introducing the story students generally construct their schema, their background knowledge is formed and ultimately they become ready to what is going to happen next and a mood is basically uh, set up. Now, coming on to the step 2, what happens is that you can ask students what they see, what they feel, what they think and remember as far as the text is concerned. So, as you go step by step and when you read sentence by sentence, you will find that students are developing their opinions, they are feeling something because they are associating the text with their personal life experience. So, therefore, their thinking ability is enhanced, their feeling is strengthened and their memory is also uh, fostering. And while they continue this process, you can encourage them to build their personal experience. At the second step, you can also ask students to share personal experiences. After completing the story, either you can do that or while uh, uh, reading the story or the text or the poem, whatever is being uh, shown to the students, you can ask them to share uh, whatever they are thinking or if there is any incident that is coming to their mind, they can talk about it. You, they can also share their personal life experiences. Their viewpoints since are they const are constructed through the text, so it becomes important for them to express it and the channel which is the language is there helps them to express themselves better. Now, coming up to the next point, it says that uh, you can incorporate brainstorming, you can incorporate discussions, journal writing and you can help students to interpret opinions about the text, what should have been done, how can it have been better, how according to you this matter be dealt, you know there are a lot of things that can be taken up and further you can discuss the scope of improvement which are essential for any language learning student, right. So, group discussion stimulates their spoken capacity, journal writing will help them to think and write. So, it will ultimately strengthen their 
writing potentials and also their interpreting opinions will help them to think and foster in a, a better way. Now, coming on to the step 3, what you can do at the end when you are applying personal growth model that is personal uh, response approach. Let the learner think about the experiences and discuss it while uh, doing uh, the reading of it and by the end of the, uh, uh, the, the, the text, you can form groups, divide the class into peer members and ask them to discuss the theme, come up with the solution and build their views and experiences accordingly. Then you can conclude the session with remarks and like I said at the beginning of the slide, these steps can be changed, modified whenever it is required. So, what we are considering is that literature is basically exposed to the students who have certain knowledge of language. It cannot be exposed to those people who are novice into language. So, let us make them able to understand the literary devices, the language, the, the, the flow of the literature that uh, takes place and then we can take up to the to, to them to the depth. So, since it is an interesting one and it fosters their learning, let us try to understand that why we are incorporating personal response approach into our classrooms. So, at first it encourages the students to make sense of their experiences, it is pretty obvious and uh, their personal lives uh, are being uh, seen with more uh, closed lenses. So, text themes are quite important for them and they develop their viewpoints. Secondly, it says that it promotes students to associate the subject matters of reading text with personal life experiences. The third point is that it engages individual in literary text reading as personal fulfillment. And the fourth point as it is mentioned that brainstorming, group discussions, journal writing, interpreting opinions, generating views not only gives them the chance to understand the literature, but it fosters the language skills and those language skills are listening, speaking, reading and writing. So, like we said that group discussions will help them to listen and speak, journal writing will help them to foster their writing abilities and similarly, it will uh, help them to store the background, it will help them to store information and ultimately their background knowledge is triggered and they are coming up with opinions, they are finding channel to uh, express uh, their views. Now, let us take up the example of personal growth model or uh, the first one which is in the personal growth model is a personal response approach. It is 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things that you did, didn't do than by the ones you did do. So, throw off the bowlines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails. These are the lines uh, set by Mark Twain. And when you read the text, you find that this is not merely a script. This is not merely a group of words, but it is an inspirational thought and that is why we are finding more interest in it. And further, if we incorporate these lines into our lives, if we look up at these lines through, uh, through the lens of our personal approach, we will find that it is inspirational. It is motivating us to do a certain challenge, to attain a task and to prosper in a more challenging way. So, somehow we come across um, situations in our lives that are quite demotivating or we find ourselves in a more comforting zone and we are not encouraged enough to take the challenges and tasks. So, at such situations this task uh, uh, to attain the task becomes difficult and this line or the group of words, the stanza, the, 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 the words that are being written by Mark Twain suits to such situations. 
and learners not only uh, uh, get a variety of vocabulary, sentence structures, the phrases, the rich uh, lines that are uh, thoughtful, but also they find motivation, uh, motivation, uh, motivation and also inspiration to do something that they have not done or they have been procrastinating for so long. So, they, they, they become more motivated and ultimately they, they are able to express themselves in a better way by incorporating uh, such lines and then telling students that the, what they have been doing it for a long, what they are really wanted to do in future and how by incorporating these lines they find themselves in a motivated situation. Now coming on to the next slide says moral philosophical approach. Moral philosophical approach and personal response approach are the two important approaches of the personal growth model. So, uh, it actually tells us that we have to seek values and it brings us to the fact that we should build a constructive as well as judicious standpoint. And moral philosophical focuses on morality. It also focuses on philosophical point of views. Now, as we go through the text, we find that we are contradic we have contradictions. At some point, we agree, but at the other, we disagree as well. So, this moral philosophical approach helps us to analyze it, to critically see what can be done and what can be improved. So, coming up to the next slide, I would say that moral philosophical approach brings many items into our table. And the first one is that learners seek moral values, they develop ethics, uh, they get to know what is honesty, what is dishonesty, how uh, this honesty or uh, how the truth prevails uh, over the evil and so on a lot of values can be instilled by reading literature. And if we read literature through this moral philosophical approach, we will be able to um, see that our students are not only developing language skills, but they are embedding those important values that are not just important for their personal, but also for their professional growth. Now, uh, second point, as it is mentioned in the slide, it says that it helps students to be aware of values, okay, of moral and philosophical uh, approach and identify them that lies in their reading. So, not only just they experience what is happening in the text, what is happening in the story or in the theme, but also they get aware of what is happening and their values and moral philosophical ideas are being cons constructed uh, consciously as well as subconsciously. Now, the third point says that students need to go beyond the text for moral and philosophical inference. So, like we said in the last session, uh, we have connotations and we have denotations. Denotations refer to the literal meaning and connotations refer to the inferential or you can say the, it, it, the contextual scenario uh, tells us that what a particular word stands for and what is its actual meaning in, uh, in that particular text. So, uh, you know, when we read the text, we are not just literally understanding it, but we are uh, going beyond that. And what is that? We are inferencing. We are trying to understand that what it leads to, what would be its consequences, how can we improve it, uh, what problems would it create or what solutions would it bring to our table. Now, as the last point, it says that with this approach, teachers are able to direct students to achieve self-realization as well as self-understanding while interpreting literary texts. So, Self-realization and self-understanding uh, uh, are the two important uh, um, values that are constructed among the learners who are learning through moral philosophical approach. Uh, and these important uh, 
components are helpful for developing their personal and professional uh, growth. Now, coming on to the next slide, let us try to find out that how this particular model can be applied into our language classroom. At step 1, like any, uh, like any approach, we should do brainstorming. It introduces the story and it helps you to, uh, to make the learners understand the theme of the entire uh, text. The other thing is uh, that you should ask students to think of the answers and uh, to make them think you can ask thought provoking questions besides you can give them uh, the two scenarios one with false beliefs the other could be truth ask the students which one do they think is correct and how they would like to implement it in their lives. So, in this way you will be able to develop the language because they will be expressing their views through the medium through the channel of language and also they will be expressing it with their experiences. The other point that you can incorporate over here is that you can have students to go to court. Now, these are the places where students get to know about that arguments take place, agreements and disagreements take place. And not only this, they become familiar to how these contradictions happen, how people defend themselves, what are the arguments that are being supported and um, uh, what points that are there that they can include when it comes to clarifying or explaining or defending themselves. So, somehow they uh, when they are sitting at a third, when uh, they are looking up at a scenario from the third eye, they get to know about the two important perspectives and as a result, they develop a judicious standpoint. Now, when they come and uh, they bring a certain belief with them, you can express uh, the question that what is the reason behind this belief? or what is the reason behind the experiences that they have been following. This can be specially taken up with respect to social issues and also political and economic condition, uh, issues can also be taken up into this consideration. The other thing is you can practice reasoning and arguments and that will be eventually developed uh, through, uh, through, through moral uh, philosophical approach. Now, coming on to the step 3, let the learner think about their experiences and discuss it. So, you can conclude this session by giving remarks and like I said in other slides as well that these steps can be tailored, can be modified according to the needs of the learners. You can simplify this task and you can put it in a more complicated way. Always remember that if your learners are at a very modest level, give them the simple task and then move on to the complex level. However, if the learners are quite advanced, give them uh, a level of x plus 1 and I am pretty sure that they will, uh, they will amaze you with their responses and since this particular approach gives them the opportunity to express themselves. Uh, they will be able to use the language in different ways. A variety of expressions can be seen. So, now let us take up the example of Othello, which is written by William Shakespeare. It takes us to three important points. First, that there is a racial discrimination that takes place. I am sure when you read out the story, you will eventually uh, feel that how can we develop uh, a judicious point of view and at the same time how can we eradicate these issues from our society. So, you get to know that what is right and what is wrong. Similarly, you also come across with a point that a woman is not given the choice to choose her partner. So, you can talk a lot about on women's freedom and the patriarchal society. The third thing is that you can talk about the moral values of human beings. So, like Iago who always delivered evil, you can talk on that particular character and tell that how the ill evils are affecting our society. 
So, a lot of perceptions, viewpoints can be developed under the shelter of Othello and I am sure you will be able to develop uh, varying expressions with arguments and uh, examples uh, to help and support uh, your uh, standpoints. Now, coming on to the next approach that is stylistic approach. We use this a stylistic approach to help learners learn language through literature. This is quite a different one, but it is really helpful when it comes to connecting language with literature. Because literature is not merely the group of words, it brings expressions, it brings devices with it. And we are helping our students to learn the language with rich variety of uh, uh, devices like metaphors, alliteration, sounds, graphemes and so on. So, now let us look how this stylistic approach looks like. Stylistic approach is basically, uh, basically is a selection that can be done by the author consciously or unconsciously. And for example, people have a special style of living. Okay. They have a special style of speaking, but they are not aware of their style. So, unless for some reason they become conscious for it and decide to change it. Okay. So, for instance, in music, style is the characteristic arrangement of rhythm, harmony and melody. And these three components are uh, taking up to three important uh, elements. They are ethnic culture, type and genre. In the same way, Painting style is the range of colors or you know brush techniques and paint application, right. So, style in literature is the way an author uses words, sentences, lexical items, literary devices to establish the desired effect to convey the meaning of it. Okay. So, one of the best methods of teaching poetry is the stylistic approach. And uh, in especially non-English speaking context, uh, stylistic approach helps students construct the language competencies because it exposes them to a variety of rhythm, uh, the, 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 the harmony and the, you know the, the, the takes place in the language. So, the application of this method leaves enough space for the students to discuss the devices that are used and similarly it provides both the instructor and the student with a cohesive and a systematic way of uh, doing literary analysis. So, they just not read the text, but they analyze the text through different methods. They get to know what is its meaning at the same time at the syntax level, they get to know that how words are arranged, what devices are used, uh, figurative speeches, uh, figurative devices are extensively used or not and so on. And what kind of uh, deviation does it bring to the language classroom? So, that is all it brings by the stylistic approach. Now, what uh, benefits? it gives us, it functions as a tool to study various perspectives of the author, okay. And it analyzes the feature of literary language to develop students sensitivity to literature. It is also concerned with the choices that are available to a writer and the reasons why particular forms and expressions are used rather than others. It is a language based approach. So, it is a part of language based approach to using literature to make meaningful interpretation. Uh, in order to understand it more carefully, let us first try to get through that how can we apply this procedure into our classroom. 
first do the brainstorming like we are always doing it and give introductory comprehension of the poem since now students are going to deal at both the levels they are going to look up at the semantic value of the poem and they will also deal with the syntactic structure of the uh, poem so give them the idea that what they are going to learn this will help them to make a scenario and also uh, uh, establish establishes a mood and since if it is going to be appealing it will help them to take more interest at this step two ask the students to start identifying the literary features of the poem and this stage is basically called as the identification stage so at the identification stage they can use pencil and take text in their hands and they can see that what are the idiomatic expressions or metaphors simile and other uh, important uh, rhythms uh, that are used in the text they can look up at the syntactic structures also and in this way they will be able to analyze it constructively and segregate the two components they will take out the 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 uh, they will take out the important syntactic structures from the semantic uh, poem now since two creams are now separated you can encourage the students to explore any deviation now there is a term called deviation you will be amazed to know what is deviation so i am writing over here deviation is basically a style uh, which is used in stylistic analysis when a person leaves the expected ways of expressing their information so this particular is a style uh, is achieved when the uh, poet is trying to put up in rhythm or you can say they are developing poetic effects in the poem and also they are developing a certain style so in a traditional way or oh, uh, this uh, the sentence is written with a subject and verb and object but if the alteration takes place it means the conventional method is unfollowed and that's how deviation is evolved so deviation actually helps a, a poet to deviate from the original style and incorporate the new one which is a modified one and it is not conventional it is something which is a creative way of expressing their thought an opinion in deviation what we see that uh, there are several uses of uh, alliteration which a, which a poet doesn't use in real life experiences or maybe while writing a sentence so uh, the writer or the poet deviates from the original form and use excessive alliteration uh, you can also think of assonance other things that are included are cause consonants and then the rhymes and then you can go up through syntactic level and after that you can lead up to semantic value of the poem uh, at the stage 3 you can uh, conclude it and in this phase the students should be able to pinpoint the effect the foregrounding effect that they have got this attention from it and uh, you know these activities uh, are performed both on semantic as well as on syntactic level so i'm taking up the uh, taking up the example of the little match girl which is a literary fairy tale by a danish poet and author hans christian andersen and in this there is a frequent style uh use of alliteration if you go through uh, the text you will find that in line number 23 line 25 line 26 28 34 42 and 61 and you will find number of other cases as well where the alliteration is widely expressed and what is alliteration by the way a stylistic device where the first consonant sound is repeated in a series of words so like uh, there you say 
in line number 23 it is written through which the winds whistles through which the wind whistles here the alliteration is taking place because uh, see which the wor sound of uh, which the wor sound of wind and the wor sound of whistles are coming one after the other and therefore they are represent representing the example of alliteration also you will find other examples of the stylistic tools that are used in this uh, in the, in the in the little match girl for example you will find assonance example and by the way what is assonance is a stylistic device where vowel sounds in adjacent syllables or words are the same or similar to each other so in line number 3 in line 4 5 14 17 18 20 23 and there are varying uh, examples uh, of assonance in line number 23 so in the line number 18 you see that there is a example and uh, it is written corner formed so as you see two vowel sounds are coming one after the other come following the syllables and also the words so uh, it is one of the examples of assonance Uh, similarly you will come across with a number of words like dead take stark set and uh, roof through go home and largest cracks and so on similarly you can come across uh, with rhymes so rhyme is a stylistic device that is based mainly on the repetition of the sounds or syllables typically at the uh, end of verse or line and uh, this repetition is repetition is important here because it brings a certain effect uh in order to attract the reader so i can quote up two examples that are here in order to help you investigate in line number 19 and 20 you will find that there is uh, something written as her little feet she had drawn close up to her but she grew colder and colder and to go home she did not venture so to her colder and colder a uh, a uh, and then in the last phrase you say uh, venture so right after one clause to the other you see that rhyme is being followed to her colder and venture and therefore this is one of the perfect examples of how rhyme uh, rhyme is used in the little match girl similarly you can go at the syntactic level as well and the syntactic analysis of this story is mostly centered around the order of words so the writer several times uh, you know deviates from the norms of the english word order that is subject verb object so he tries to put up in a variety of it so in line number 1 when you go through you will find that there is a perfect example where it says that most terribly cold it was most terribly cold it was it is pretty obvious that this particular sentence doesn't follow the traditional method of writing english sentence this follows a creative way an expression is there there's a deviation and this deviation tells us that Uh, uh you know the subject verb object is not followed there's something else you can look up at it 
it. This does not make the sentence grammatically wrong, but a technique which is called deviation is mainly applied here. So, at first what we generally see that we have time constraints. Since students are in a hurry of completing the syllabus and they are looking towards uh, examinations, so reading for pleasure would not be the suitable method for them because uh, uh, they are ultimately looking to fulfill their examination purpose. As a result, uh, you find that reading literature extensively would uh, somehow lead their lack of interest and we have to avoid that. So, we should induce only those texts that are timely and we can uh, expose our students to the uh, scripts that contain uh, only uh, limited kind of material in which they find comfortable as well and they get a variety of texts that are important for their growth. Therefore, time constraint is an important factor that you should always consider before suggesting it to the students or before incorporating it into your syllabus and curriculum. The second thing is what is your goal? So, are you basically providing the learners the opportunity to learn the language or you are simply giving them to read it for pleasure? So, if you are giving it for the purpose of reading for pleasure, then you can suggest uh, uh, a variety of books that may or may not contain the language varieties, but it is important to go through the text before you suggest understand its uh, significance, uh, find out how it is going to contribute to the development of the language with regard to their uh, professional as well as uh, personal um, endeavors and then then prescribe them uh, in the in the classroom. So, what I am trying to include over here is that what is the purpose? If the purpose is language, then your ultimate purpose is to provide them the exposure of listening, speaking, reading and writing. And like we have talked about personal and philosophical approach, we give them the opportunity through small group discussions, we give them the chance to express themselves with respect to their judicious point of views and we give them several other opportunities to express themselves freely and movably. Therefore, language if it is the ultimate goal, you should think of including those activities that will lead to these kind of developments. If you do not include uh, the listening, speaking, reading and writing skills in literature, then it would not fulfill the purpose of including literature into the language classroom. Thus, it is important to identify what is our goal. It is the, it is the, theory, it is the theme that we are, want them to learn or it is the language development that we are looking forward to incorporate in them. If the theme is both that we should help them to learn language as well as literature, then choose the text wisely so that it includes moral ethical values and at the same time there are discussions and uh, opportunities of expressing it as well. Uh, so, the third point that I am going to mention over here is that you should not be underestimating the value of the learners. Therefore, make the class as much as interactive. I mean, it is important for the learner to, uh, to, to, to express and it is also important for the teacher to guide, but we have to make the differentiation between the teacher centered and the learner centered. The more it is teacher centered, the less the opportunity the students will have. So, if students are given the extensive uh, learning, they will be able to express themselves. Therefore, take the class in a way that it becomes learner centered. And in teaching literature, we often see that this thin margin is minimized and the more it is minimized, the less the interest is being taken by the students. So, uh, if you mark a sharp differentiation between the learner centered class and the teacher centered class, you will see some amazing results that the literature is there, but the learners are actively involved. And number four, which I am taking up from this point only, that make the learners 
active. So, the text should be prescribed in such a way that it leads to the active reading, it should not lead to passive reading. Now, here we have to make a differentiation between the active reading and the passive reading. What happens in passive reading that learners just read it and maybe for pleasure they just uh, embed its uh, uh, structures and uh, both from the syntactic and the semantic level, but in the uh, active they find themselves in, in, involved in it and this involvement is necessary because we are making them to think in the target language. And this thinking will be stimulated when they find the enough exposure and therefore, this exposure can be triggered only and only when we give them this opportunity. So, uh, make the class learner centered and at the same time help the learners develop effective communication skills and uh, make uh, more interactive. So, interaction is something which is encouraged. and you should be providing the context and the text which is uh, which is not just attractive but involves learners actively so these are the important factors that you should always incorporate in your language teaching pedagogy and since literature is an effective tool of learning language you can give them um, a variety of opportunities to get it through. So, like I mentioned about uh, the active uh, involvement of the learners, we should understand that uh, you know when we see our students be becoming passive, they eventually show no interest and therefore, students behave possibly uh, you know passive in a way that they are not taking active uh, part in teachers questions and they are just merely copying of what is being taught to them and they also uh, lack enjoyable activities. So, it is difficult for teachers to implement these challenging cognitive you know activities, but if it is uh, bind by time constraints and the language is suitable to them with their competent competency level and if it is learner centered, if it is interactive enough, then I am pretty sure that it will bring more interest in the class. So, English students proficiency matters when it comes to the choice of the literature. So, le reading literary work for enjoyment is unachievable when it comes to introducing it into the classroom because they face difficulties in understanding the text. So, it prevents them from being vocal to express their ideas and opinions. And uh, in order to uh, help them, you can adopt a paraphrastic approach. Since we are reaching up to the conclusion of, uh, of teaching language through uh, literature, uh, let us see what the text is it about, how it is going to be incorporated, if it requires information based, involve the cultural understanding into your classroom, if it is going to be difficult for your learners uh, or your level learners competency is slightly lower, then you can adopt paraphrastic approach and after that you can see which model suits the best. Is it personal growth or professional, uh, personal growth or moral philosophical growth? And accordingly, you can implement it and help the learners grow in a better way. Now, coming up to the conclusion, let us try to understand that what we learned in this session. We learned three approaches, personal response, moral philosophical and stylistic approach. And these approaches are the preferred ways of teaching literature because here literature is not isolated from the learner, rather learner finds himself close to the text and not just the closeness occurs, but the learner gets attached to it in a way that the emotional responses are being built up, their opinions are being constructed and they find a platform to express themselves in a more convenient way. And that is one of the reasons that personal and moral philosophical and stylistic approach. Though personal response and moral philosophical response are the two important approaches of the personal growth model, but this stylistic approach is bit different because it separates the linguistic features from the uh, meaning. 
and therefore stylistic approach is widely used in language based classrooms because it helps the learner to identify the figurative devices the syntactic structures that how the uh, writer deviates from the original form and how he or she brings effect into the text so that all can be studied widely and learners can enhance their writing as well as the spoken capacity now coming up to the second point like i mentioned english literature could be a great benefit to students to improve their language proficiency so not just the perceptions or uh, the viewpoints or the judicious standpoints are constructed but their language proficiency uh, which is our ultimate goal of teaching is being built up so literature ultimately provides a great platform and it is being said that uh, language without literature is void and if we use literature in our classroom it is extensively helping our students to become better in their language as well as in their endeavors like we studied it builds ethical values it helps them to uh, understand what is uh, uh, right or wrong it helps them to construct arguments on what do they consider and on what do they not consider so as the third point mentions the teachers are still con rather conservative to the very choices of literature teaching approaches <coughs> this is slightly uh, 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 conservative in a style that teachers are taking a central position in the class and in many uh, approaches we argued that if we give the opportunity to the learners to express themselves they will find teaching and learning more interactive and at the same time learner center class will be encouraged but when we teach literature the ultimate um, uh, the ultimate authority is being given to the teacher because teacher is the person who guides with the text and tells the students where to go how to go and how to lead this class but there are some contradictory opinions as well with regard to the role of the teacher into the language classroom where literature is taught because here we are not just focusing on literary part we are focusing more on language also so when we in, are incorporating the language components language act activities such as group discussions debates and extempore and so on so learners are taking the central role at that point of time here teachers become become facilitator they become advisors and uh, teachers are not the persons who are responsible for contradicting the students point of view because their view points are being built up upon the text so what matters in the uh, literature language classroom is that what kind of material is being presented to them so it would be a great choice for them to uh, it would be a responsibility for the teachers and the educators to present the right text in front of the students so that students not only associate themselves with the experiences but they also develop values such as ethics and uh, opinions so the fourth point as it is mentioned over here it says that personal approach engages individual in literary text reading as personal fulfillment now personal approach uh, uh, you know when when the learner finds interest in reading the literature in reading the poem or the story or the drama it is not merely uh, the isolated uh, uh, presentation of the text but it ultimately makes the person close Uh, to the text and therefore reading becomes a habit of it reading becomes a habit of a person reading helps the learner to uh, uh, to, to to make it as a past time uh, uh, and therefore reading is widely encouraged in order to enhance vocabulary so personal approach will make the reading pleasurable and they will be able to help themselves better in a better way ultimately we will make books uh, the friends of our learners fifth point says that stylistics is the study of varieties of language in a text we can come across with 
uh, vocabulary with syntactic uh, structures, we can also analyze the meaning of it. So, stylistics is very helpful with regard to the language teaching and it includes the particular choices that are made by the writer to illustrate the pitch. So, learners get exposed to a wide variety of devices that are they are uh, that uh, that are used and also they will come across with the uh, with the choice that they would like uh, to incorporate in their spoken and written utterances. Moral philosophical approach that is under the heading of personal growth model helps students to be aware of the moral and philosophical point of views and it helps them to identify that lies in their meaning. So, uh, all these approaches that we have studied so far, personal approach especially and moral philosophical approach are interrelated. They promote growth and development of the learners. Stylistic approach mainly talks about uh, the use of language in a context and it basically separates the two creams, the syntactic and the semantic and then the learner goes through step by step to analyze the text. So, uh, a rich content is being exposed to the learner and learners find themselves in a position of constructing language one after the other. So, ultimately literature is beneficial for language students and they should be exposed to a rich and appropriate variety of a vocabulary and text. These are the references that you can use in your uh, uh, classroom teaching and you can suggest others also. With this we have come to an end of this session. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, in the next session we will talk about the language theories and uh, with this I would like to take leave. Thank you very much for joining. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I will be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I am going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I will be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled in all of its adaptations almost as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone white and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master 
being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? asked the master to death. And death replied, it was not a threatening gesture. Rather, it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.